All right, so. It says rotate your phone. Hey, everybody, how are you doing? Make sure you keep. We're going to wait for y'all to come in, come in, come in, come in. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us on tonight's live special edition House of Love. So we're going to give people some more time to come on in. <laughs> so should I start? See if you turn it this way. What happens? No, the opposite way. I had it the opposite way. Yeah, you see how your live is saying wrong? No, this way. All right. We're going to we getting started in one moment, everybody. No, you have to leave your street now. It's not okay. Hey, you guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Scoot over a little bit my way. I just turn your camera towards you because we're going to be talking. All right, everybody. So, happy Good Friday. Turn it down just a little bit. Happy Good Friday to you all. Uh, this is Elder Matt Johnson. And this is Evangelist Mandy Fresh Johnson. All right, so we just wanted to just come on live, really, because, you know, I'm so used to being in church on Good Friday. What about you? I am. Yeah, me too, bitch. So <laughs> we going to. Hey, Auntie. Hey, Miss Culpepper. Tell Darius I said, what's up? Who? You got to talk to your people in there. Hey, Finish you guys. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Miss Rhonda Sheffield. How are you doing? God bless you, woman of God. Do me a favor and share the video, everybody. Share, the, share this video, please. Share this video. Share this video. Yeah, share the video. You guys are in for a treat. We're excited to be here tonight with you guys. We just believe that God is still doing great and awesome things. Despite of what is going on across the nation, despite of what people are facing, he is still risen. Amen. He's not on the cross. Everything that we would face, he already defeated it when he went to Calvary. So praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to have some church on tonight. You know, we're going to do this Facebook Live status. And we're just going to bring you the word of the Lord. And we're going to just have a good old time just to really encourage your hearts. All right? Yes. Uh, so I'm going to open up in prayer. And she's going to sing one or two minutes of something. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you for this is the day which you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you because without the Calvary experience, we would not be here today, God. Amen. So we tell you, thank you that you shed your blood and gave your life so that we could live. And for that, we tell you, thank you. And everyone that's on listening, God, we thank you right now, God. And we ask God that they receive something, God, that said and on this live on tonight, may it penetrate their heart and bring fruit productive fruit to their life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We just be so careful Jesus. to give your name the glory, the honor in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you going to sing for us today? I don't know. I think I just feel and, like I just want to flow. And we're and we not just all deep and stuff. We're going to have some, try to have some good dialogue, even though the cross experience is very serious. Uh, we believe in having some fun because uh, Mary Hart does good like medicine. So, uh, you know, that's how we're going to do it. So what you going to sing? What we gonna sing? Praise the Lord! My instrumental done went off, but you know what? Sing God acapella, is good. Just, just real quick, acapella. Pause that. <laughs> we gonna go back old school. You know how the saints will go when the music start acting up, or the musician wouldn't show up on time. We have to sing acapella, so this instrumental is acting up. So go ahead and what you gonna sing? Just two minutes or something, honey. <laughs> okay. Bless Lord, you, Lord. You are awesome. Oh, Help me say, Lord, Lord you, you are awesome. awesome. She making me Help sing. Me If it wasn't for your love. If it wasn't. If it wasn't for your love. Hallelujah. If it wasn't yeah, for your yeah. grace. I don't know where I'll be without you. Listen. 
When you understand what is going on in the world, you have no, you, there's nothing else but to do but to praise and worship him. I'm a worshiper at heart, praise the Lord. So he, the fact that he said we finna worship, amen. This was my backup singer. Glory to God. Yeah, I tried to be a good praise and worship background singer. <laughs> so we try to bring y'all church as best as we can. I'm not that singing preacher. I don't tune up like that. Uh, but nevertheless. <clears throat> All right, so we're just going to really get into it. Uh, I'm going to mention a few things before we really get in the text. Because we're, re we're going to be coming from um, Matthew chapter 27, verses 32 through 50. Matthew chapter 27, verses 32 through 50. Uh, but really, before we get in the text, I want to <clears throat> make mention of a couple of things. And we're going live on both pages. So uh, if, I, if you see me looking to your left, we're on my page. If you see me kind of looking the way to the right, we're on her page and vice versa. <clears throat> but one of the things I, I really want to say is many people in the Christian world uh, really don't have a problem with reflecting on this memorable event that has taken place, that took place in history. And I call it the greatest act of love on earth. That's what I title it as. Mm -hmm. uh, however, while most Orthodox Christians don't have a problem with reflecting, we love when the Easter season come around. But I, you know, I grew up knowing about the resurrection, but we still call it Easter. We was looking for the eggs and everything. But mm -hmm. while people look forward to this year, you know, this time of year and things like that, and they love to reflect and the shed blood and what Jesus did on Calvary and all of that stuff. Uh, the problem, we don't have a problem doing that. The problem we have is living out the cross experience in our life. So, and I always say, like, what good is us reflecting on the cross experience mm -hmm. if we're not going to live the cross experience out in our everyday life? That's true. Then it becomes in vain to even have a reflection of it because I don't know about you, but uh, I don't just consider the resurrection or the Easter season just as a ritual thing that we look forward to. But this is something that I live out every day in my life because I don't know about y'all. I preach the cross. <laughs> and I study the cross and I preach the cross throughout the year. I don't just wait till Easter time. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And uh, I always say it like this too. Consider this as well. Like when we, when we're, because I want to challenge you all uh, from the perspective of this. While you're reflecting, make sure you're living out the reflection. And it should be easy. We, we say that and I, say, and I know it's easier said than done. Yeah. But when I say it should be easy to live out the cross experience in your life, this is the angle I'm coming from. Uh, when you consider that Jesus was spit on, he was mocked, mm -hmm. he was uh, beat up, the flesh was stripped off his back, uh, he had the crown of thorns placed on his head and he died all for us. That's why I call it the greatest act of love ever known to mankind. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When you consider all that he went through for you, for me, for you, for all y'all, guess what? It should be easy. To offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, like the Bible says, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And I want to set this straight right now. Living right, living out the cross experience in your life, you don't you don't get a reward for that, particularly say. That's your reasonable service. You get what I'm that saying? Just like your, your child. Like they may get straight A's and do all of their chores and all of this type of stuff. But you don't want to always reward them from the perspective of... Because then they'll start to think like, okay. If I do this, now get this. Then I'm going to get that. So the same yeah. thing with God. We Sometimes we treat God like that. Listen, it's enough because of what he did, but through Jesus, that he died on the cross while we should be living right. We don't have a right to come and say, God, you should pay my bills because I've been living right. Or God, you need to open these doors uh, for my career because I've been living right. Or you, you should heal my uh, uh, family's body because I've been living right. No, that's reasonable service. Reasonable service. Anything you want to chime in before we jump into the text? I'm excited. <laughs> don't my <laughs> wife look beautiful? Don't we look good back here? Listen. <laughs> Listen real quick, and then we gonna, we gonna get to the serious stuff. But right here, if you see the the uh, photographer, shout out to Top Flash Photography, Garrix and Dorcellus in Fort Lauderdale. Listen, he gave me a beard, and any, anybody know my beard is like Anthony Hamilton's. It's kind of pitch patch and things like that. Pitch so patch. he made my beard look real good in this photo. So don't my wife look good there? She look good here too. So, so what you want to open up with before we jump in this text? Any no, I, I totally agree with you. 
when you say the fact that, you know, the fact that he died for us on the cross, you know, that should be enough to want to live your reasonable service unto the Lord. And sometimes, you know, it, it does get, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it does get a little bit challenging. It does get a little bit hard, you know, to turn the other cheek every now and then because people be trying you. But that's why we have the Holy Spirit, right? Because mm -hmm. we know we wouldn't be able to serve God without the Holy Spirit in us. Great. There's nothing that can glory, no flesh can glory in his presence. So we need the presence of God on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. This is what helps us to walk in the spirit of love, to be able to love people, not out of a, a fleshly thing, but we love people with the love of God. Because you won't be able to love people without the love of God. I agree. So that's all I wanted to say. Let's go ahead. And, and, guess what? When, and when we talk about love, listen, it's more than lip service. Yeah. Because is. when you really love, that love is going to be tested. And we need to start re revisiting how we teach this thing of love in the yes. body of Christ. Uh, but nevertheless, like I said, we're going to be coming from the text of Matthew chapter 27, verse 32 through 50. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 27, verses 32 through 50. The resounding theme that I'm going to be sending uh, throughout that we're going to be sending throughout this message is a challenge. Uh, let's see. She said, can we move the phone back so we both can be on the screen? Oh. All right. <laughs> there you go, Super T. All right. So let's jump to it. So I'm going to be reading two or three verses at a time. But like I said, the reoccurring theme is going to be making sure and challenging uh, us to live out the cross experience in our life, yes. not just from a perspective of reflection, but making sure this is an everyday part of your life. Verse 32, uh, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. It says, now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And really, we're going to somewhat take this verse by by verse, because I believe in milking everything out the word of God. And I really want to my spiritual father who's on shout outs to Apostle McCurry, Pastor uh, Super. I call her Pastor Super T. McCurry. <laughs> uh, but one of the things he he had always challenged me on is make sure you're not you preach the text, but draw out the revelation and what God is really saying to the people mm -hmm. uh, from the text. So you want to tell them what it's saying. But at the same time, you want to draw out how to apply it. So. For, so from the, from the first verse, I'm sorry, a little tongue tied. Now, as they came out once again, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him, they compelled him to bear his cross. Now, understand something about uh, Simon. He was a brother. He was from North Africa. <laughs> That's what Cyrene was, you know. So I said, we're we going to have a little fun tonight. Uh, <clears throat> but he was most likely, uh, you know, in Jerusalem just from... For the Passover celebration and things like that. Uh, can you imagine being somewhere celebrating and then you're pulled into a situation to help somebody in a crucial situation, a hard situation, a troublesome situation? Mm -hmm. uh, and guess what? He really he did, he really didn't know Jesus. He had yeah. no connection to Jesus, but he was forced and thrusted into a situation uh, that made him uh, pick up the burden that somebody else was supposed to be carrying. And now I want to uh, admonish us now here with this verse talking about Simon. I know it doesn't seem like there's much revelation in it, but it really is. I want to really challenge us uh, to understand that this verse is a precursor to what Paul admonishes the church to do in Galatians 6, 2, when he said, bear one another's burdens, mm -hmm. thus fulfilling the law of Christ. Part of living out the cross experience means understanding and being okay with the fact that many times you will be pulled into another person's situation. Mm -hmm. That's part of the cross experience. That's one of the things he demonstrated. That's, true. That's part of the love walk. You're going to be pulled into other people's situations. What to do what? Not to gossip. So, babe, you got to kind of. What happened? I'm right here. It, oh, got, they can't see me? Yes, yeah, scoot your chair over a little bit. <laughs> All right. My phone wouldn't turn at a certain angle and hers is horizontal. Mine is vertical. So that's why. So we're going to do the best we can. All right. <clears throat> but nevertheless, what was I? At? So, like I said, just like Simon, he was pulled in to help Jesus. Many of us going to be pulled in in this cross experience, living this out in our everyday life, pulled in to help somebody else in their situation. What? And a lot of times it's not going to be convenient because how many of you know when it comes out to walking, walking out love, mm -hmm. when it's really time, when it does hit the fan and it's really time to intervene and help folks, it is never at a convenient moment. And that's really what tests your love walk. When you can really intervene and step in and to assist and help a person when it's not convenient for you. But not only that, when you step in, it's going to be to encourage that person, to carry burdens, to strengthen them, to build them up. 
and you can't run from those opportunities when they come. Why? Because we all know love is an action word. So be prepared when you say that you're living out the cross experience in your life, your everyday life. Listen, that means you're saying that I've made a commitment to walk in love and to demonstrate love to other people just like Jesus would do. And guess what? You can't run when those sticky opportunities come. You can't say, well, that's their problem. That ain't mine because that ain't what Christ would have done. Yes, we want to use wisdom because the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we want to make sure we're not running from opportunities that's going to show where we really stand in our walk in love. Because guess what? I believe a lot of people run from those sticky situations when, when they have an opportunity to intervene and to mm -hmm. bear one another's burdens and to come in to assist, to build up, to strengthen. They run. Why? Because I don't feel a lot of people walk in the level of love that they say they do. But me, I don't run from opportunities. I love sticky opportunities because I know Christ involved himself in a sticky opportunity on my behalf. So the least I can do as part of my walk and in, in, in living this love thing out, the cross experience in my everyday life is involving myself in the, in the lives of other people to help them. Guess what? The Bible says if you know to do good and you don't do it, what is it called? Sin, right? Mm -hmm. Anything you want to chime in? I mean, when I was reading verse um, 32, you know, like you said, he was minding his business. He was on his way something. He was on his way somewhere. He came to, you know, enjoy the Passover, but he was pulled into a service that he probably didn't think he would be pulled into that day. But I think about it, I think it, about it in this aspect that it's a heart posture, right? I believe if a person has it's a, what? A, ha a heart posture. It's a heart posture. <laughs> heart posture. I talk on my tongue, so excuse me. I believe it's a heart posture. So for me, I believe God trusted him enough to know that this was going to happen on this day and this man would be willing, even though that was not his mindset at the moment, but God knew because of his heart posture that he was going to be willing to pick up the burden no matter what. So like when we read, I can tie this um scripture with Galatians 6 verse 2. It says, bear one another burden so we can fulfill the law of Christ. This is one of the law of Christ that we have to fulfill by bearing each other's burden. It's like you said earlier before, sometime it may be inconvenience because you know, you're minding your business. You're, um, you have things that you're doing and God may require you to kind of like when we cry you to kind of like put what you're doing down so you can assist your brothers and sisters in Christ this is the biggest this is the biggest golden rule I think that God can say love which is it covers a multitude of sin love is the foundation to make mm -hmm. anything work Don't so nothing else work without it no yep. nothing else can't work without love so I believe he was at the right place at the right time. And I believe God was able to trust him with that assignment and that he would say yes, even though it inconvenient him, he was on his way to enjoy the Passover. But I believe God put him there at the right place because Jesus needed somebody to help him carry that cross. Usually you know, during my research, when people are about to go, you know, be a part of the crucifixion or get crucified, you have to carry your own cross to the crucifixion. But because he was bleeding so bad and he was so badly mm -hmm. wounded, he was not able to carry his cross. So God knew to have the right person at the right place. So what you right so what you're saying is this was a divine appointment. I believe this was a divine appointment. Uh -huh. It was because if we fast forward in history, you know, after he got crucified, I'm sure he witnessed all the I don't want to move ahead of myself, but I'm sure he was able to witness the glory that was taking place Amen. on that day. So the challenge is from this verse, and we're about to move on, is when you're really living out the cross experience in your life, let's just not reflect. Let's make sure we're actually pulling from this word that we study and read so much and make sure we're living it out. So the challenge from that verse is don't run from opportunities uh, when it's time to help folks while they in they mess, while they in their sticky state. Because guess what? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want nobody to run if God uh, was compelling somebody to intervene into my affairs. Because mm -hmm. many people ask kind of my rescue. I don't know about you, and I'm glad that they were obedient and that they took the walk of love seriously and stepped in my spiritual father being the main one amen so let's go on to <laughs> verse uh and i love them dearly now let's go on to verse 33 and it says that when they had come to a place called golgotha mm -hmm. this is to say place of a skull now we're going to just be doing a little teaching and empowerment but understand some golgotha g-o-l-g-o-t-h-a was the execution site. That's where the action took place. That's where it was sitting right outside the city of Jerusalem and that it was up on a hill mm -hmm. and that's where the crucifixion took place. All right. 
Uh, so now, one of the things I do want to mention, because we hear a lot during this time, the Calvary experience. Uh, and one of the things we want to realize, Calvary and Golgotha was the exact same place, mm -hmm. okay? Luke is the only one that out of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Luke was the only one that identified uh, this this location as Calvary yes. comes from the Latin word Calvary a locus. Mm -hmm. But this is what he identified as Calvary. But Matthew, Mark and John identified this as Golgotha. So I just want to kind of throw that out there. So if you're reading through the Gospels and, and you're and you're saying like, hold on, why does this say Calvary? But this says Golgotha. It's all referring to the same place. It was the crucifixion site. Um, but it was also, and Golgotha actually comes from an Aramaic term, uh, which means place of the skull. But just know this was the place where your whole life changed. The reason why you're here is because Jesus didn't run from that place. <laughs> Golgotha, whether you call it Golgotha or Calvary. Amen. Can we move on? You want to mention something? No. Go okay. Ahead. So verse 34, they gave him sour wine. Listen to this. They gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. <laughs> And when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Matthew and Mark are the only two gospels that presented this this story, this portion of the story here, where yeah. Jesus is being offered a wine and that 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 vinegar, as some translations say vinegar, but this wine and this gall before getting on the cross. This was Matthew and Mark were the only two. Now I want to mention something about that. When it says sour wine and gall. Mark calls the substance myrrh, not gall. Matthew calls it gall, uh, but Mark calls it myrrh. Mixed together, it created an anesthetic that could be used to lessen pain. Mm -hmm. So this is why it mentioned that. So they try to offer him a pain reliever, as they say. You know how you have a headache and you take some Tylenol for that pain? Mm -hmm. uh, but Jesus refused this, and there's some good revelation in this. Jesus refused to drink that sour wine and that gall because, again, it was used as an anesthetic that would have lessened the crucial pain that he was going through. Because remember, up until this point in Matthew, where we at? Matthew chapter 27, verse 32. He had already been beat. The crown of thorns was on his head. He was getting whipped. The flesh was already off his back and all of that. So you have to understand he was already in excruciating pain. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I want to focus on the fact, why did Jesus not drink? The wine and the gall. Why did Jesus not drink the wine and the gall? I believe it's because he thoroughly understood his assignment. Remember, it was to numb and lessen pain. But I believe he declined it because he understood his assignment and knew that this agonizing pain from the beatings, the flesh being ripped off his back, mm -hmm. uh, and the crown of thorns was all part of his assignment. Okay? And so I believe he chose to endure every bit of this because guess what? He understood what he was presently suffering right now was nothing compared to the glory that was going to be revealed. And I want to just encourage somebody right now that, listen, you may be in a sticky or hard situation. You may be in some pain, some turmoil. Uh, you may be in some strife and some stress. But guess what? What you're going through, though, it may not seem like it. It may not feel like it. But what you're going through right now, don't try to numb that pain. Take that pain. T model your life after Jesus because many times I wanted to numb my pain, but I couldn't. And many people try to numb it with drugs. They try to numb it with alcohol. They try to numb it with food. But just like Jesus, we have to neglect, we have to decline that and say, listen, I understand everything that I'm going through, this pain, this sorrow, this trauma, this turmoil, the rejection, the abandonment, the abuse is all part of of my assignment in the earth. It is how God is what God is using to mold us. That's right. God is using all of that. And I'm speaking to you now, just like Jesus. Stop trying to numb that pain. It's part of your assignment. It's molding you into who God has already ordained for you to be. And guess what? You can't be, things are usually easily molded when what? They're in the fire. Mm -hmm. So I come to say, God don't love you any less. He's just trying to make sure that you conform into the image that he has already preordained you to come to be in. Amen. Amen. Anything um, you want to jump in, yeah, baby? I go ahead. Go ahead and say that. <laughs> I want to go ahead and say the revelation that I took off there, just to kind of like piggyback off what you said, um, the type of drink that they wanted to offer him, you know, it was bitter 
to the mouth, like but he it was bitter to the mouth, but he decided not to take it. He decided to go through that process. He decided to take it like a good soldier. Like I'm, I'm reminded of the scripture in Second Timothy two verse three says, "You therefore must endure hardship." as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus had to endure the process of going through. Um, it talked about another scripture that can tie into it. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Yeah. Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane, when he was, you know, <laughs> when he was toiling back and forth with God, you know, if you want to let, can you let this cup pass? But you know what? Not Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. And sometimes we're going to go through things in life. And sometimes we're going to have to go through things where we're going to have to drink up a cup that we don't want. But we have to understand but because we said yes to God we live our lives as a poured out offering so that when other people come to know Christ because of you you'll have a testimony to be able to give to them uh -huh. hey this is what I went through right this is a process that I had to walk through to get to where I am remember Everything that we go through in life, God ties us to an experience, right? The trials and tribulations, the letdowns, the traumas, the molestation, whatever it is that you have to have to go through in life to become the person you are. God takes that and he uses it in a story so he can be able to save other people. The fact that Jesus said, no, I don't want this drink. I don't want to numb the pain. I want to see how it feels. I'm going to walk this thing Ooh, out yes. as a good soldier because guess what? He understood the, the, he understood the crown that he was going to receive at the end because remember he got the name above all names because he was able to walk out the process he was able to endure the pain Preach. every lash that he took on his back was for us remember it says he was bruised for our transgressions the, I'm sorry he was bruised Bo for wounded. our iniquity he was wounded, wounded for, for our transgressions they, bruised stop. he was wounded for our transgressions <laughs> there you go our iniquity Go ahead, sweetie. I'm just trying to hit you. Just cut my whole train of thought off. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I was trying don't to do hit that. I understand, but you just, just whoop. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Go to the next scripture. All right. So let's go on. We do apologize. The scripture says he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the, the chastisement, chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Praise the Lord. So every lash that he got on his body, amen, was for our healing. Every lash that he got on his body was for our deliverance. Every whooping that he took was so that we can overcome this world. So there's nothing that the enemy can try to entangle with you, entangle you in that you cannot overcome because Jesus already went to the cross and he took all of that on him on the cross. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I hope we saying something really to encourage you. The challenge in this is not just to build you up, but it's to challenge you and making sure part of living out the cross experiences in your life is, listen, accepting the pain, mm -hmm. accepting the turmoil, and don't try to numb it. Don't try to reject it because, again, I encourage you, listen, take my word for it. Take my word for it. What you're going through now is nothing compared to to what God has for you when you come out of this. Right. But if you grow weary and if you faint, you're not going to get what God has for you. So I tell you, just like Jesus refused to drink that wine and that gall, stop trying to numb your pain. Welcome that pain. Deal mm -hmm. with that pain. But make sure you understand that it's part of what God is using to mold you. Somebody just type in the comments, mold. Mold. <laughs> so let's jump to verses 35 through 37. We're still in Matthew chapter 27, mm -hmm. uh, verse 35. Uh, we're going to go 35 through 37. It says, then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. And the prophet they're referring to is David. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Uh, so, let me see with that verse. And then verse 36 says, Sitting down, they kept watch over him, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. So, real quick, um, if you didn't know, like verse 35 Psalms 22 is a foreshadow of verse 35 in Matthew chapter 27, <clears throat> because in verse uh, in uh, Psalms 22, I should say, David was going through some extreme, like cruciating turmoil uh, from his enemies. Like he was going through some uh, sorrowful times and he began to cry out uh, to God. And he began to ask for some relief. He began to, he even said, well, we know Jesus to have said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Guess what? David said that. He said that first in Psalms 22 because that's how much pressure and pain that he was going through. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to tell somebody this. Don't run from your process. 
Don't run from your process. I want to encourage you with 2 Corinthians 4, 17. It says, for our light afflictions. And I know when you're going through, when you're in the heat of the battle and you're being whooped on and it feels like the devil is having his way. <laughs> listen, stop blaming the devil for everything that's going on in your life. Folks say it's the devil when you can't pay your bills. It's the devil when your kid's acting up. It's the devil when you lose your job. It's the devil when you get sick. It's the devil when you... Listen, sometimes God divinely appoints those times and utilizes them as part of the molding process. So I tell you again, don't run from your process. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 4, 17 again says, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a more far and exceeding eternal weight of glory. Mm -hmm. When it feels like, understand this, when you're going through the pressures of life, you have to remember that our high priest Jesus dealt with something that none of us would have the courage or we would have the mental fortitude or the physical strength to deal with. And you have to remember there's nothing that you're going through that Jesus can't sympathize with. In all manner, he suffered everything for our behalf. So listen, when it feels like don't nobody understand what you're going through, when it feels like nobody understands what you're dealing with, guess what? You got that high priest Jesus that knows exactly how you feel. And guess what? I want to free somebody today. You're not going to hell for feeling. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you don't have faith in God because you feel. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to die for the sins of the world, not their feelings. You are allowed to feel. That's right. The problem comes in is when we allow our feelings to guide our life, when we're supposed to be walking out the cross experience. Mm -hmm. So I want to just tell you, listen, it's okay to feel. Deal with your feelings. That's what you want to be honest about in your time of prayer. In mm -hmm. your time, listen, you have to be able to go to your God, your high priest, and say, listen, I'm mad as hell. I'm frustrated. <laughs> I'm angry. Guess what? I'm hurt. I'm mm -hmm. wounded. I'm rejected. I'm broken. That doesn't mean you don't have faith. That means you're human because truth be told, Jesus had hum human experiences too. Like my wife said at the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, no, let this cup pass. <laughs> And I know a lot of us have been praying for, to let that cup pass, but I want to admonish you, don't run from your process. And the difference between Jesus and a lot of us, a lot of us say, Lord, let this cup pass. And when we see he's not letting the cup pass, we tilt the cup over and keep it moving. <laughs> Can't do that. You cannot circumvent the process because mm -hmm. if you circumvent the process, you are yeah, not going to be in a position to handle what the Lord has for you after that suffering is over. Remember, it's not just to prepare you for your blessing, but it's to make sure that you're in a position to be able to maintain the blessing when it comes. So don't circumvent your process. Mm -hmm. It's all not just for your mode of being the person God created you to be, but you got to be a container, a vessel that's able to hold the blessing that God brings after the suffering is over. Got anything to say about that? Mm -mm. All right. <laughs> uh, and I, I do want to say this. <clears throat> make sure that you're going through. And I have to make this statement. Make sure, hear what I said, go through. Don't die in your situation, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I decree as the mouthpiece of God tonight, somebody that's watching, whether you're watching live, whether you're going to come back and watch the replay, I decree right now, even the enemy been speaking to some of your mind, telling you that you're going to die in the midst of this situation that you're in, in the midst of this family turmoil, you're uh, in the midst of things that's going on with coronavirus, that the enemy been speaking, you're going to get it. I decree right now, yes, we have compassion and we're praying for those that have been affected, but I I decree right now, you who are under the sound of my voice, that coronavirus ain't going to come near your dwelling place. Amen. And I don't care what's going on with everybody else. Listen, not from a bad perspective, but I've come to decree that it's not going to come near my dwelling place and it ain't going to come near your dwelling place. Amen. Amen. So I decree you're not going to die in the midst of whatever you in, but you're going to come out of this thing unscathed. Amen. Let's go on here to verse 38. <clears throat> so we're still... <laughs> You sure you don't want none of that? You good? All right. Verse 38, Matthew chapter 27. It says, then the two robbers who were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. Verse 39. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, you who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of, you hear that? If you are the son of God, Come down from that cross. 
verse 41. I want to read that one too. Likewise, the chief, actually, I'm going to just take it all the way down to verse 44. Likewise, the chief priest also mocking with the scribes and the elders said, he saved others. Mm -hmm. He himself cannot save himself. If he is the king of Israel, let him come now down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let God deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Verse 44. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reveled with the same thing. I'm going to tell you something. I want to deal when, it's, when we're talking about living out this cross experience in your life. Mm -hmm. You know how much self-control it took for Jesus not to say anything back when they were. <clears throat> listen. If this was me, I probably would have really been challenged in this area of wanting to respond, especially, you know, how we get when folks telling you what you can't do or uh -huh. you're supposed to be this and that. If you're supposed to be prophet, this or elder, this or evangelist, this or apostle, this, why you're going through that? Because if you was really what God would have you to be, you wouldn't be going through such and such, all of that type of stuff. But Jesus, like the old saints would say, he didn't say a mumbling word. And part of walking out the cross experience in your life, people is having self-control. When folks are coming against you, folks are saying things about you folks are laughing and mocking you saying what you what they thought you should be or they say you thought you was this but you really ain't that you have to learn to bridle your tongue mm -hmm. stop feeling you got to give folks a piece of your mind part of the cross experience means following the way of peace you don't have to give folks a piece of your mind truth be told some of us ain't got enough mind to give folks a piece of anyway so keep that mind that you got amen you want to say anything as it relates to that? Yeah. You, <laughs> you funny. Child, listen. <laughs> you know, sometimes God will allow, even those that are utilized great in the body of Christ. I mean, you go to the 20th dimension and you come back down with heavy revelation. But I believe sometimes God will allow you yourself to be the first partaker before you can deliver any message. Amen. Before you can even, before people can come eat out of your tree, you yourself have to go through a continual process. I believe this process that we go through in life is never ending. It is continual till you cross over into glory. So it doesn't matter how much God utilizes you. We have to go through something. Yes. Even Paul, who was a great revelatory, a man who walked in great revelation and pretty were uh, pretty much wrote the third book of the on my third part of the bible think about it he had a thorn that was assigned to his flesh to keep him humble so i believe god sometimes will allow his servants to eat or drink from a sour cup not because he doesn't love you not because he doesn't care for you but every now and then god has to whip his service into shape every now and then god has to allow us to, to oh taste and see even the things that we don't want to taste and see <laughs> it's still good amen the bible says oh taste and see that the lord is good whether it's whether you drink or something sweet or sour he's still good because he used all of that to work together for your good so it doesn't matter how great of capacity that he utilized you everybody has to go through something this is what qualifies us to reign with Christ this is what qualifies us to carry the measure of grace that is assigned yes. to our life so we have to be able to endure that and go through that Paul had to amen that thorn that was assigned to him kept him humble and sometimes because God may use you at a greater capacity, he has to utilize a thorn to keep you humble. This is what keeps you coming back to him time and time and time and time again. That's why he go also told Paul, guess what? My grace is sufficient for you. Like you can handle this. You, you got this because think about it. The measure of weight that you carry in the realm of the spirit, sometimes the attack is at that particular level. And if God didn't entrust you with it, you would have never released Come it unto on. you. So that's what I have to say about that. Listen, part. I'm going to say something <clears throat> again. We have to just be quiet. Keep your mouth closed. A lot of us, I'm going to tell you, truth be told, and I'm going to say this, this is not for everybody. This is just a small sector of people. I believe some of us don't mind going through the trials and the tribulations. We be worried about what other folks going to say. <laughs> We, we don't we, we know life is going to happen, but a lot of our turmoil comes because we are worried about what sister such and such going to say. That's right. If they find out I can't pay my rent, if they mm -hmm. find out I can't pay my bills, they be on doing all them lives and they be doing this and going there and they couldn't even pay <laughs> their rent. They got put out their house. 
We don't want those challenges, not because we don't want them, mm -hmm. but because we're scared of what other folks is going to say. say. That's right. Stop caring what other people got to say. Listen, when it came, our model of living out the cross experience in our life come from Jesus. Yes. If he didn't say anything and you say you connected to him, you got to learn to bridle your tongue. That's right. Hold your peace. That's if you don't remember to not give away anything else. Mm -hmm. Remember, don't give away your peace. <laughs> that is something that you need to protect at all costs. And guess what? We say we trust God. We trust his provision. We trust his protection. Yeah. But guess what happens? Guess what happens? We want to jump in the fire and let folks know what the deal is. We want to lash back out. We want to argue. We want to fuss and fight just to prove A what point. people are saying they're wrong. It don't matter what people are saying. I come to free you right now. If vengeance is going to be the Lord's, let vengeance be the Lord's. Keep your hand out of the pot because he's even using that to mold you and to make you. That's right. What people are saying when they're spread lies about you, mm -hmm. mocking you, harassing you just like they did Jesus. Guess what? He's, it's all working together for your good. But if you keep trying to lash back out, if you, if you keep trying to respond just to prove that you're not what they say you are, you're, try you're contaminating your assignment when you try to put your hand in the pot. Let me say that again. You're contaminating your assignment when you put your hand in the pot. Take your hand out of the pot. God got you cooking in that pot for a reason. Listen, you don't need to dip your finger in it. You're already in it. <laughs> Let him control what's going on in that pot. Because I promise you, if you let the process run, you let the course run itself, mm -hmm. listen, you're going to be amazed at the finished product. And guess what? People say, babe, it's easier said than done. It is not easier said than done. For those of you that really talk about who you this and that in God, guess what? A lot of times we see what level we really on when it comes to dealing with our enemies and not responding to the folks that's coming against us. That will show you. How, what level you are. I don't care how hard you pray. I don't care how hard you worship. When it comes to living out the cross experience, one of the greatest tests of your Christian maturity is whether you can keep your mouth shut when you want to let folks have it. Praise the Lord. Glory. Um, when, I, when I read this, it talks about the chief priests and the scribes and the elders um, mocked him. So this he's talking about leaders in the church, leaders that are supposed to be representation of God. We can kind of like parallel that with even lives today. You look at leadership today in church, people where we should be coming together, we're so divided, right? So this is there's nothing new under the sun because Jesus went through this, right? The um, chief priest was mocking him. Oh, you supposed to be this great wonder. Come off the cross. Come down and save yourself if you're supposed to be this great person. And the thing about it is a lot of us go through something and sometimes God allow you to be on display in front of your counterparts uh, while you're going on. through just to show you the heart of people. But Jesus did not respond because he understood that he was on assignment. He paid attention that there was a bigger picture. He did not respond to his critics. He did not respond to the naysayers because he understood that there was a people that he had to redeem back to the Father. The main assignment was, remember we there was a death that took place when Adam fell and he sinned. So God had to bring his son to redeem us back to him. So Jesus understood understood the bigger picture oh, yes. and sometimes we're going through different things and our counterparts or those that you co-labor with in the gospel they begin to criticize you or put you down or say oh you're not this you're not a prophet you're not an apostle look what you're going through or pay attention to what's happening in your life this is a time where you don't say nothing you let God fight your battle sometimes God will allow the very people that call you brothers and sisters turn around and bite you I remember my old my, um, spiritual father of the church I used to go to he always he always said you have to learn how to serve with a snake bitten hand because sometimes those that you feed will turn around and come back and bite you so as servants of the most high God we got to know how to serve with a snake bitten hand because why we understand that is not about us there's a bigger picture there's people waiting for you to come forth there's people ready for you to come on the other side of your process so that they can be resurrected so that they can be set free so that they can be delivered so we got to pay attention to the bigger picture Jesus understood the bigger picture. That is why he didn't respond to his counterparts, although he could have. 
But he did because he understood the bigger picture. And sometimes we have to understand the bigger picture and not come down off the wall. Just, and I'm not trying to do it right, but I'm going to go ahead and stick this scripture. Just like Nehemiah, when he was building the wall, he had a vision. And those that were supposed to help him build came up against him and said, who are these feeble Jews that's trying to build the walls? Shall they build the walls of ruin? You know, Sambala and Tobiah, they came up against him when they should have been helping him building the walls. Why? Because the Israel was exposed to the enemy. They were susceptible, but because God gave Nehemiah a vision, he did not come down. He did not respond to his critics. He did not respond to his naysayers. And sometimes we miss out on what God is trying to do in our lives because we're too busy responding to the naysayers. We're too busy responding to the critics. And God can't process us the way he wants to process us. And it's like we have to start the process all over again so we can take this scripture and utilize it as an example. Jesus did not respond to the high priests and chiefs and those that were considered the great of them, the most of them in the synagogue. He understood that he was about his father's business. And I believe that the body of Christ can grasp that, that I'm about my father's business. I don't have to respond to every credit that come my way. I don't have to respond to every naysayers. I don't have to come down from building to respond because I'm about my father's business. I'm done, baby. Girl, you, <laughs> oh snap! I wanted to enjoy some of that. I'm about to go get some offering out the room and give it to her. <laughs> Listen, what you said is so powerful. I'm not even gonna try to match that fight. She the preacher, I'm the teacher. That's why we work so well together. But I want to say this: <clears throat> don't be deceived by the enemy. I don't like using ah, oh, don't be deceived in this season. It ain't never a season to be deceived by the enemy. So don't. So I don't want to say that. But don't one of the greatest deceptive things the enemy does is allow those same type of people that was talking to Jesus and, and mocking him, even the two thieves that was being crucified with him as well. Yes. Y'all in the wrong position, folks that be in worse position, you find out they be the ones talking the most and they in a worse position than you. Not only did they lose their house and couldn't pay no rent, they ain't got nothing to eat, they ain't got no clothes, and they still be the main ones talking about you. But one of the one of the most deceptive things the enemy do. Guess what? He'll get people to poke and pry you, hoping to pull you off course. Yes. Why? Because that ain't going to be the most detri detrimental thing with you responding. It's once you start to engage even the more, and then they pull you off course. Guess what's going to happen? Like Nehemiah, if, if some of us was Nehemiah, we would have came off that wall. He said, what you and, said? And, right, and we would have <laughs> dealt with these people accordingly. And, and just like Jesus, this is our model of living and walking out the cross experience is staying focused under all circumstances, no matter what's going on. Yes. People, hear me. Hear my heart. Please don't be deceived in any season. Don't allow people. Moses is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. He had an assignment and he allowed people to cause him to miss out on the yeah. end result of that assignment. Yeah. So God, there is some glory. There were some Ooh, blessings. There were some signs. There were some wonders. There were some miracles Hallelujah. after Jesus. this suffering that you're going Ooh, through, after this fierceness that you're Ooh, enduring, Ooh, after this rejection, this abandonment, yes. the lying, the abuse yes. that you're going through. Ooh, there was some Ooh, glory Ooh, after this. Don't allow people to make you miss out on that glory that awaits Ooh, you. Ooh, 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 if y'all can feel. Listen, I'm excited because even some of y'all, God is just giving me some things. Uh, because sometimes even when you're on live, God to prophetically speak beyond the go people ahead, that babe, you can go see. Forward, go listen. forward, go forward. It's okay, go forward. Uh, That's why we on this live. Go forward. Yes. I, I, I prophesy right now that no enemy in hell is going to be able to get you off assignment, but Hallelujah. guess what? It's going to take your participation. Ooh, Stay the I course. There was something, if you can only see how you look, how yes. you're going to look, how much money you're going to have, My how God. your family is going to be jailed together, how Hallelujah. your ministry is going to be thriving, guess Ooh, what? How, how much of a great career you're going to have and how much entrepreneur effort you're going to be putting forth and it's going to be succeeding and prospering. Right. If you can only see the after effect, you will know how important it is to stay oh, yeah. on this road. Stay Don't let course. folks pull you off your cross experience. Carry that cross. Carry it. Because if you do, the Bible says, Don't grow weary in well-doing. Mm -hmm. For in due season, there is an appointed time for you to come out. And I want to challenge something. And I want to say this while I'm encouraging you all. There is an appointed time for you to come out. None of us know. Only God knows when that appointed time is for you to come out. 
preachers, I challenge you in your in your heart to see people free, in your heart to see people feeling better, stop lying to people and telling everybody that they're coming out. Because some folks are going to be in the fire for a while. Because mm -hmm. why? Some of us, it takes a little bit longer to do some molding and to mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn how to encourage people without giving them false hopes. Because guess what? I want to tell y'all something. Y'all, A lot of y'all like to quote uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts and plans I have for you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give us hope and an expected end. Yes. Guess what? And we, we're talking about the cross experience. But as it relates to that, y'all have to remember those people were in bondage because yes. of disobedience. They were going through some hell. They were going through some turmoil. And God said, guess what? Y'all not coming out of this bondage. And don't let no prophet in, in no from wherever they from tell you that you're coming out because you're going to be here for <laughs> 70 years. But guess how good God was? Even while they were in bondage, he said, go ahead and have some babies. He said, go ahead and build your homes, <laughs> plant some vineyards, drink good wine, do all of that. But you ain't coming out of this bondage. That's so right. I come to decree right now. Even Lord, while you're in the midst of the hell that you're going through, Hallelujah. guess what? God is still good and he's Lord, still looking out for you. And I told my wife this and I want to just mention this to you all. Lord, Stop Lord, letting the enemy make you feel like Lord, your whole Lord, life. It's collapsing Hallelujah. just because one area of your life is afflicted. You could be thriving in your ministry. You could be thriving in your family. You could be thriving in your career. But you have money problems and then allow the enemy to make you feel one area is making you feel like your whole life is falling apart. People stay focused. Stay focused. Stay on the path. Mm -hmm. There shall, listen to, look at my mouth and listen to the words that's coming from my mouth. I decree right now. I'm not declaring nothing. Declaring is simply making it known. But when you send a decree out biblically, that means it's set in stone. Mm -hmm. I send a decree out that there is going to be glory. Mm -hmm. After this, I send a decree out that nobody under the sound of my voice is going to die in this situation. But wow, you're going to go yes. through the situation. In Jesus' name. Let's keep it moving. We, girl, we, girl, you get stuck on a text and make your mind go. <laughs> Let me just put this out there since we're um, yeah. having a good word before he go ahead. Um, if you like the word that you're hearing and you enjoyed it so far, please go ahead and sow into our ministry. Because every um, proceeds that we do get, this help us um, go out there and feed the homeless. Because we do go out there and serve. Even while this coronavirus is going on, House of Love is still serving. Mm -hmm. So if you are being blessed by this word, please cash out money sign House of Love FL. Again, cash. Cash app, money sign, house of love, FL, and the proceeds that we get helps us to do what we do in the community. I just want to go one ahead and put that out there. And why she said that, I want to take this. <clears throat> I was talking with my uh, spiritual father, Apostle Greg McCurry. We was talking a couple of weeks ago, and I said one of the most damaging things that has happened to the body of Christ since this coronavirus, we're supposed to be the ones offering hope to a hopeless world. But we've become hopeless ourselves. How can the church? Go ahead and type the cash app in the thing from your computer. Like in the, in the you can type it in. Give us yeah, one. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna... Okay. So one, of, so one of the things we, we, we've done is we've ne neglected or aborted our assignment to serve. So we've become like the very hopeless ones that's out in the world. So I challenge you people of God. Part of the cross experience that we're dealing with deals with serving. You serve when it's convenient. You serve when it's not convenient. God never said you allowed to not serve because they said you're supposed to be quarantining. Mm -hmm. God never said you don't have to serve because the coronavirus is killing thousands of people. He never told. Yes, we want to use wisdom, but using wisdom, God's word doesn't conflict people of God. Using wisdom doesn't ne abort or neglect your obligation to be out serving because if we all run and stay in our house. That's right. If we're locked up quarantining, who's out there serving the people? That's right. And we don't say this for no glory. I have to mention this because this is part of the cross experience, living out the cross experience in your life. Putting yourself on the line because that's what's called sacrifice. And one of some, this one person told me when I went down uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale area, if you didn't know a lot of the organizations that assist homeless, and I'm going to get back because we're going to be wrapping this up, but I have to mention this like uh, Salvation Army, the United Way, and things like that, they have had business interrupted. Mm -hmm. 
the, the world is literally turning upside down by the moment. And guess what I said? This what well, the person said, and we become we uh become abandoned because a lot of these businesses that usually assist us are now shut down. I got excited when she said that because I was already there ready to meet a need, but now it made me to go even harder to ask people to partner with us mm -hmm. so that we can continue to meet the need. Amen. Because when organizations like that is shutting down, this is a perfect time for the body of Christ to be able to stand up and meet those needs. People of God, when you're living out the cross experience in your life and really living a life that Christ will be pleased with, it ain't just about you, your four no more, meaning it ain't just about you and your family. You as a body, part of the body of Christ, have an obligation to be out serving. Right. Do so with wisdom, but wisdom doesn't mean you shouldn't be out serving. Right. So ain't nobody going to convince me differently. Serve with wisdom. Everybody can't be running. <laughs> Some of us just got to trust God that he's going to protect us while we're out doing what he told us to do. Amen. All right, let's go on to verse 45. <laughs> Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. That's love. Serving, even when it's not convenient, that's love. That's the cross experience. Verse 45 says, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. Mm -hmm. Verse 46, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli! Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, I'm going to go to verse 47. Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man calling for Elijah. This is how foolish they was. They couldn't even discern what the Lord was saying. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. Verse 49, the rest said, let him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to save him. These people were so foolish. They thought he was call calling for the prophet Elijah to come to his rescue. Not knowing how is Elijah going to come rescue the Messiah? Uh, he was, uh, <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? How was, how was Elijah going to come rescue the Messiah? This was Jesus and part of his humanity. Mm -hmm. He was feeling pain. He was feeling turmoil. And once again, I decree, it's, I declare, I'm not going to decree, I declare, it is not a wrong thing to have feelings. That's right. He came to die for the sins of the world, not your feelings. Feel, it's okay. Jesus voiced it. But guess what? He complained up. He complained up. Some of us, when we get in our feelings, we want to call our prayer partner. And we got to go through about three hours of gossiping sessions before we actually get to the prayer. But Jesus did. And this is where we're taking our model. Part of our cross experience. When you're going through hell, keep your head to the sky. Complain up. Tell God all about your troubles. Or as the old saints will say, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. <laughs> this is a real thing. Yeah. This is what Jesus modeled. He wasn't trying to complain to folks that couldn't do nothing for him. He was complaining to the one that was able to deliver him. But at the same time, this was just his humanity talking. Because guess what? Like Apostle said, he leveled up. He understood this assignment. And this is what I want to encourage you all with. Listen, you have to make sure that you're sure that your assignment is more important than how you feel. Because if it's not the case, you're going to abort that assignment. Make sure that your assignment and sticking to your assignment is more important than how you feel because if that's not the case, as soon as trouble comes, especially when the heat turns up, you're going to abort that assignment. But verse 49 says, the rest said, let him alone once again. Let's see if Elijah will come to save him. Save him. Verse 50, then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. People, I want to mention this to you. He stayed faithful to his assignment to the end. We got folks. This is something me and my wife was talking about. We got people that try to prove their point uh, about how, how good of a Christian they are, how strong of a Christian they are. But guess what? You'll know where you really stand at in your walk when the fire comes. Oh yeah. When the heat turns up, that really reveals what's inside of you. That's going to really separate the wheat from the tares, the sheep from the goats. So I tell you, I don't care what I don't I don't do a whole lot of <clears throat> talking about what I'm this and that because I know how life can do. But other people, I encourage you, don't be one of the people got to walk around telling folks who you are. I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. I'm an intercessor. I'm a prayer warrior. Listen, 
Who you are is going to really be revealed when those times of testing come. And whatever assignment God has you on, whatever title God has ordained for you to walk in, all I ask for you to do is stick to your assignment even when hell is coming against you. Amen. Because guess what? Once again, and I'm going to keep saying this because I want to encourage your heart. The glory that's coming after this suffering that you're going through, the blessings, the signs, the wonders and miracles that await you after, if you can endure this, you're going to look back and say, man, this is but a distant memory. So don't give in. And I decree again, you're not going to die in the midst of whatever it is you're going through. But I speak encouragement to you right now. I speak strength to you right now. I speak the love of God to you right now. I speak faith to you right now. I speak joy to you right now. I speak that God is sending people that's going to be like Simon was to Jesus to help him bear that cross. There are going to be times, don't get me wrong, where you're going to have to bear this pain all by yourself. And ain't nothing nobody else going to be able to help you do. But when it's not those times, I pray that God divinely positions people in your life. Not people that's going to add to the burdens, but people that's going to help your load be a little lighter. Because remember, Paul declares we're to bear one another burdens. That doesn't mean to be a human garbage can. That doesn't mean to let folks dump in you. That means you just coming alongside of somebody. And you're helping them carry that cross for that time until they develop enough strength to continue on. Because guess what? If that was me and if that was you, I, get, I know you'll want somebody to be there for you. Go ahead, baby. Okay, so the last scripture that I had in the offering, this is a revelation mm -hmm. that I got. Um, 27, chapter 27, verse 51, it said, And behold, I'm reading, make sure I tell you what Matthew 27, said. right? Yeah, Matthew 27. I'm reading the English Standard Version. It said... Verse 51, it said, And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tomb also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, coming out of the tomb of his, and, and it was his resurrection, and they went into the holy city. So this is the revelation that I got, right? After Jesus told God, oh, after Jesus said, It is finished, and he gave up the ghost, right? He gave up. Let's just say his self-will to want to stay in the fight. He gave up and said, okay, God, it is done. Immediately it says, the people, the saints that were asleep, resurrected. They came up out of the grave. And what I want to say is, there's many of you that are on this life that God is going to cause the things that you've been through to resurrect a lot of people, yes. amen, to cause people to come up out of the grave. There is nothing that you've gone through that is going to be in vain. God is going to use your story. Amen. He's going to use the cup that you drink. Amen. He's going to cause you to save a generation. Because when Jesus died and he rose, the people that were asleep, there are people that are asleep now. And they are waiting for you to come forth. They are waiting to hear your sound. They're waiting for you to open up your mouth and to make a de declaration. There are people that we are called to. We, every everybody that is on the live has a nation inside of their belly. There has a people that God has assigned to you that are waiting to hear your voice. That is waiting to hear your sound because your sound is going to cause them to come out of that grave. Come on, come on. Your sound is going to resurrect them. Your sound is going to cause them to come alive. This is why you have to drink your cup. This is why you have to go through your process. This is why you have to endure it like a good soldier. This is why you don't come down from building no matter what it looks like because there is a people that life depend on you coming through to the other side. Yep. There is a people yep. that is a sign to your crucifixion. Everybody got to go through a crucifixion. Come stage. on. Preach. Everybody that God has to go through, they're dying to themselves just so that God can be glorified. Everybody's going to have to make that decision where you say, you know what, God, behold, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done because you understand there is a nation of people that is waiting for you to come forth. You understand there is a nation of people that is waiting to eat from your table, that is waiting to eat from the story, the things that you endured, the things that you had to walk out.
out for yourself. Because remember, we are first partakers of anything that we preach, anything that we sing, anything that we write on a book or on a CD. We are first partakers. Because guess what? I can't tell you something. I can't preach to you something and not tell you how to get out if I didn't first partake of it on myself. Amen. So we all have to partake in a cup of suffering. And that's okay. Because when you come out on the other side, then those that are asleep are going to rise. Those that are sleeping in their grave clothes right now that either left the church because of church hurt or that either left the church because of whatever the situation is, God is going to utilize your story to draw them back in. And those that will come to know Christ because of your story. So endure it. Go through it. That's all I wanted to say. People of God, that was powerful, babe. Thank you for that. Listen, how do, how do I want to put this in closing? Give me the words, Lord. When you're going through things, the first thing that comes out of your mouth should not be, Lord, deliver me from this. And I'm not talking about, now get me, now hear me. I'm not talking about as it relates to falling in some type of sin that you need deliverance from because that's a whole nother message. Because a lot of times, truth be told, when it comes to living out the cross experience in your life, conviction from the Holy Ghost, people, and I admonish you and I'm going to get off of this. Conviction shouldn't come after you have done the sin. Amen. Conviction is the Holy Spirit telling you not to fall into sin. And it's something uh, some years ago that I experienced and God told me in my prayer time, you would not need to be down here repenting and asking for deliverance had you used my wisdom from the beginning. So walking out the cross experience in your life, stop falling into stuff and then asking God to dig you out. Because guess what? The Holy Ghost wants to keep you from falling in those pits. Yes, the Holy Ghost is the power source that after you've fallen in the pit, that he helps you to come on out of it. But it's much easier to stay out the pit. But I just want to say just once again. Don't just automatically pray for God to just pull you out of your pain, out of your suffering. Ask the Lord, what am I supposed to be learning from this? What is what 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 are you trying to shape in me? What are you trying to build up in me? Again, the, there's a lesson that God don't waste, waste any lesson. He don't waste any experience. There's a lesson in everything. So I want to just encourage you all. Stop always looking for the way, way of escape soon as trouble come. Ask God, what can I learn from this? I want to build some strength up. God trying to build strength up, trying to keep you on a firm foundation. Stop always looking for the way of escape. Can you imagine if some of the, if Jesus looked for the way of escape, we wouldn't be here right now. Amen. Don't always look for the way of escape because truth be told, he's not going to put more on you than you can bear. Whatever is on your plate and in your cup, that's what you're supposed to be eating and that's what you're supposed to be drinking. It's your obligation to ask God, what am I to get from this? And not just that. Whatever God has assigned uh, any trials and tribulations to the cup as part of what you're supposed to be drinking, he always equips you to deal with it. He don't just pour it in your cup and say, drink this and you by yourself. So I encourage you, don't let the enemy tell you that you're alone. Because the cup that God allowed that you to drink from, the cross that you're carrying, he's already equipped you with strength to carry it. Amen. You're stronger than you think you are. You're more wiser. You're more stable than you think you are, even when it feels like you're on shaky grounds. I decree right now, you're not going to crumble under this pressure. I decree you're not going to crumble under this pressure. Anything else you want to say, babe, before? Because I want to make one last point. Um, well, well, I just yeah, want to say, just want to... Um, just, the I, well, let me just encourage you. Let me just say this because I feel like we said enough for tonight. Mm -hmm. Just remember, endure. Whatever you go mm -hmm. through, it is because God is trying to build you up. You have a story to tell. Okay. There are people that's waiting for you to come forward. So that's all I wanted to say. I believe we said enough. Amen. <laughs> so thank you all for tuning in to House of Love. You got Matt and Mandy of uh, the Dynamic Duo. We just give you what the Lord would have for us to give you. Just make sure you're living out the cross experience in your life. But yes, hit us up, Cash App. Guess what? When you give, we are legit. Even though we haven't officially launched, we'll launch at the appropriate time when my spiritual father says we should launch. Okay? 
So we have, we do have a 501c3. So we're up and actively operating in ministry as if we're already started because we can't wait uh, till the official launch come before we start ministry. We're doing Amen. this already. Yes. So when you give, it is tax deductible. Yes, it is. All right, we have 501c3, House of Love Ministries Incorporated. Uh, the cash app is dollar sign House of Love, F like Fred, L like Leroy. So House of Love, FL. Then you can give through PayPal. The cat, the PayPal is uh, the email, House of Love, FL at yahoo.com. House of Love, FL at yahoo.com. All right. Okay. Uh, or you can mail checks. We take checks too. Well, give them our address, baby. Yes, we do have a mailing address. It's 4846. If you want to write a check, make sure the checks don't bounce. <laughs> we don't take rubber checks at House of Love. <laughs> but you can write it, make it out to House of Love Ministries Incorporated for and mail it to 4846 North University Drive. That's 4846 North University Drive. Suite number 551, and it's Lauder Hill, L-A-U-D like dog, E-R-H-I-L-L, -L, Florida, 33351. All right? So we love you all. Have love a wonderful night. Listen, continue to celebrate Good Friday with your family, friends, and your loved ones, and have a dynamic time on Resurrection Sunday because he Woo! got up for you. In Jesus' name, we love you. Love y'all. Love you. Have a good day. All bye. right, y'all. Bye. <laughs>